So if you're gonna paddle, you either need to borrow a boat or you need to own a boat. If you own the boat, you need to store it somewhere. Store it somewhere where it's safe and sunlight doesn't fade it because you wanna keep your investment in good shape. Um, and then you gotta carry the boat from that spot to the truck or the car. If you're like me and you own a truck, you can just throw it in the back of the truck, tie it down, throw your paddle in and your gear, and you're off. But if you don't own a truck, if you have a regular car, you have to have a rack system. And if you, if you buy a rack system, it's going to be a little expensive. It's going to cost you $400, so you're going to have to make a real commitment to paddling. But a lot of cars actually have a rack system in place, and you can use those to tie your boat down. The best way to load your boat is with a friend. That makes it a lot easier because boats weigh about 60, 70 pounds, kayaks, and it's hard for a lot of people to get 60 or 70 pounds above their shoulders and onto the top of a car. Um, so I would suggest, first of all, you find somebody the day you're going to go paddling. Don't paddle alone anyway. You never paddle alone. So have a friend, and each of you get at each end of the boat, and then you hoist it up onto the top of the car, um, and you put it up there in the middle of the car. And I always like to have the bow, which is the front of a boat, headed forward, and the stern, which is the back of the boat, headed back. I think the river gods are kinder to you if you actually drive to the river with the boat headed in the right direction. When you get it up there, you got two choices. You can flip it over like, like I'm, I've done here and let it ride on its cockpit, or you can flip it up and you can buy a cockpit cover and put that over it. If you flip it up, up like that, you're going to have a problem with, with rain if you're, if you're going in the rain. When you get to the river, you're going to have an inch and a half of water in your boat. But that's up to you. If you don't mind the water in the boat, then flip it upright. I happen to like the way it looks sitting upright better than the way it looks turned over on its cockpit, so I often will drive with my boat sitting up like that. So once you get your boat on your car or your truck and on your racks, you're going to need to put four lines on it. One on the bow, one on the stern, and two in the middle. You got two choices here. You can use rope or you can use straps. I would always use rope with the bow and the stern lines, but I would use straps to tie the boat down in the middle. And you got two choices with the types of straps you can use. You can use cam straps available in various lengths all the way from six feet to 20 feet. I'd get the longer ones so you can put two boats on there occasionally. Um, or you can use what's called a ratchet strap. If you're a motorcycle enthusiast, you can use that. So you might have something in your basement like, um, like clothesline, but I wouldn't use clothesline. I'd go ahead and out and get a good rope at Home Depot or somewhere or buy yourself some cam straps at the Outfitter store. I think the most important knot for a kayaker is called the trucker's hitch. And this is a good knot because it, it's an easy way to tighten the rope down and it can be done very fast. Um, and you just um, go through it and once you learn it, you can learn it over and over and do it like this. Now I'm going to do it one more time slower so you can actually see how to tie the knot. So I'm going to take the rope loose, pop it loose. One thing I love about a trucker's hitch is it slides out of the rope easily like that. But here we go, we're going to do it very easily. So, so you twirl the rope like this, you go through the, the rope like that and make a loop. You come down. You pick up your other end of your rope, come back, go through the, the loop, pull it tight, circle around, make another loop, and then loop it one more time. And there you go, you're good and secure. Once you've traveled to the put-in, 
you need to get your boat off the car. If you have your friend with you, you both get out and one of you takes the stern line off, one of you takes the bow line off, take it all the way off the vehicle and the boat at one time. Go ahead and um, don't just throw it on the ground because you'll forget it. Go ahead and roll it up, put it in your little bag where you keep your, your, your straps and ropes if you have one. And then one of, each of you get on each side of the boat and take loose the, the um, cam straps and then take them off and put them, roll them up and put them in the bags. You don't forget those. So you need to be both on one side of the car to actually take the boat off. Both get on one side of the car, either the driver or the passenger side, reach up, grab the boat, slide it over enough until it tilts, and then keep it above your head, turn around, get in an area where you can sit it on the ground and just sit the boat down. And then you're there, you're at the put in. If you need to get the boat off by yourself, the easiest way to do it is go to one side of the car of the other or the truck and um, slide the boat to you, slide it off the rack, let it rest on your shoulders over your head like a helmet, take a couple of steps away from the car, turn around and walk to the river. Don't go down to the ground where you have to pick it back up. I would suggest you make two trips one with the boat and then come back and get whatever gear you're going to need to paddle.